Now, recently I was having a, a chat in the comments section with longtime subscriber Coneman, whom I salute uh, and thank for his uh, loyalty and insightful comments all the time. Conman was made an apt remark. He said that um, <clears throat> the accusations of pseudoscience against what we are interested in, in this channel and the many other channels that have to do with personality theory, Jungian psychology, the the incarnation of it in Myers-Briggs, but also Enneagram, Socionics and so on. Um, the accusations of pseudoscience are not <clears throat> going away. And um, I think that there are some of us who don't care. They're like, you know, whoever uh, is talking about uh, what we are interested in, this particular field of investigation, um, consider it pseudoscience, well, they will never change their minds because by definition they're very stubbornly uh, materialistic and so there's no point trying to to combat them uh, we'll just stick to what we're doing and we'll ignore them now there is the other view that considers that they can be combated um, i tend to take that view i think that i would agree with the intuition that most of these people who talk about you know, Jungian psychology, Jungian types as pseudoscience, they will not change their minds. They are very, very, they're believers. They're believers in the absoluteness of the scientific worldview. And they are, they're, you know, in a, in a sense, they're like knights. They're knights of faith in defense of that worldview. So don't, they don't realize that they have a religious uh, obsession with you know, science being science and being very rigid about what is science and what isn't. We're not going to change their minds, but they still propagate ideas that we can combat. So we, we don't combat the people, we combat their ideas. These ideas are probably not going to go away, but it's fine. We can, you know, have this ongoing conversation and this ongoing refutation to keep up with the sense of the credibility of what we're interested in. It's fine to just uh, for people to say, well, it's just a private pastime of mine. I'm ignoring the <clears throat> this point of view, these accusation of pseudoscience. But I think that, again, I'm, I'm a big fan, and I explore this in The Infinite Soul, my new book, in the idea that INFJs, INFJs should not seek to change their nature for the sake of modern society, but they should still not be shy of going public. And in fact, if you look at the name the title of the prologue going public right so it's very relevant and uh, the idea is that if we want to live in a world that is not hostile to us uh, we need to change the register from trying to constantly create spaces that protect us from the world to actually really carving out a dwelling for ourselves that involves engaging with the world publicly and i'm going to do i'm going to be doing this here so in terms of the, these accusation, accusations of pseudoscience, what is my take? I've articulated it over time, you know, I've made a few videos, but again, these videos are always due for a refresh. I would argue this, um, the problem with the worldview that considers uh, Jungian types to be sort of pseudoscience is that it has a very limited, limited and limiting conception of what is true. In its view, what is true is only statements about the world of material objects and in interaction. So in a sense, what you could argue is that what's true in the view of these people is the language of physics and languages that are emergent from physics. So biology, various languages of technology, chemistry, and so on. Anything else that claims to be scientific must be false. Okay, so in a sense, and I really talk about this in my book, in a sense, when we want to insist on Jungian psychology and Jungian types being scientific, in a sense, we're giving them, uh, if you like, we're, we're, we're giving them a truncheon to hit us with um, because we don't need to claim that what we're interested in, that those systems that, we're in, that we are interested in are scientific. We can leave the science to the scientists. What we need to be able to affirm is that the domain of what is true encompasses a much larger field of actuality and possibility than the purview of science, of science as we understand it today. <clears throat> there are things, states of affairs, 
propositions that have truth, even though they're not in themselves scientific. And this is our domain. This is the domain of personality theory. We don't need to claim that it's science. It's true outside science, because ultimately what we're making a claim about when we're talking about a theory of types is about how each type experiences their subjectivity. So subjectivity, and I think you will agree with me on this, subjectivity plays a massive role in the interest that people have in type. And attempts that have been made by certain systems and models and frameworks and theories to completely take out the subjectivity in order to remain only with the objective so as to attain some kind of scientific respectability, usually they have not attracted as much attention because what people are looking for is value, it's meaning, it's purpose. It's like, a, you know, um, recreating a world that is makes sense to them. That's a domain of the subjective. But notice the fact that we're talking about the subjective, but yet I think you would agree with me and scientists scientists that have any sense, and there's many of them, scientists and philosophers of science, they agree that it is objectively the case that there is subjectivity. So in other words, subjectivity is subjective, but it objectively exists. And that's because, that's precisely the reason, the fact that subjectivity objectively exists, remember this sentence, already establishes that subjectivity, there's gonna be true things about subjectivity since it is objectively, it objectively exists. Otherwise you're denying the existence of my subjectivity, your subjectivity. So there's gonna be true things about the subjectivity. They're not gonna be in the language of science. Let me give you a couple examples. <coughs> when people say <coughs> it, is, it is evil to um, torture someone to death gratuitously, right? This is a sentence, a proposition, <coughs> that is completely impossible to put in the language of science. You cannot put the sentence in the language of physics. Would you not consider that it's a true proposition when I say it is evil to torture someone to death gratuitously? There's a very strong case to be made, and I think most people intuitively want to say this is a true statement. You can't put it in the language of physics. If you say Mozart, Mozart was a genius, and you want to explain why he was a genius, Mozart, right? What do you think is more explanatory? To say that Mozart is a genius because he composed amazing works like the Magic Flute and uh, all these piano concertos and, you know, uh, all, all his amazing works that have moved audiences across the world, regardless of nationality, for hundreds of years. Is that what's informative? Or is it inform more informative to say, oh, Mozart was a genius because his brain possessed kind of certain kinds of neurons that by connecting together um, qualify as a genius. Well, that's completely empty and ridiculously uninformative. That would be the attempt to put the truth of Mozart's genius in the language of science. So it's very clear then from this perspective that certain truths can only be stated in languages that exist outside science. They ne nevertheless are busy talking about what's true. And I would argue that's exactly the case with personality theory. That's the case that is very strongly made in the infinite soul and its predecessor, the ecstatic soul, which looks more, the infinite soul is more about energy life in the modern world and how to find purpose, meaning the sacred, uh, rich, rich, significantly rich lives. So very clearly matters of truth, but not scientific. And the ecstatic soul, which looks at the ex existential constitution of the energy, given the kind of cognitive functions we possess. So again, when someone is talking about pseudoscience, always tell them, we're not claiming it's science, we're just claiming that it says true things. Keep this in mind, because this completely disarms the, 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 the accuser who says pseudoscience, pseudoscience. Just say, you can have your science. We're dealing with something true in the same way that statements of ethics deal with true things, statements about Mozart deal with true things, okay? Of course, you can get these two books at the link below if you're interested. I encourage you to have a look. Please leave a review of the, particularly The Infinite Soul Needs More Reviews, help with the referencing. I would be so grateful if you read the book and, and enjoyed it. it. Takes a few minutes, go on Amazon, drop a review, really helps me, appreciate it. There's also a link to my Patreon page. Recently, some of you have joined me. It really helps me keep the channel afloat because you know these are difficult times and I'm really ever so appreciative of any support. So hopefully see you there as well. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Talk to you soon.